Welcome back to our old friend Jason King. It's been it's been a minute since we've had him on the show, <laughs> but uh, of all days to bring him back. Look, you know Scott well. You know college basketball as good as anybody. Uh, this is such a um, this is something Jason. I always thought would happen eventually, and I wondered under the conditions that it would that somebody like a Kentucky would come after Scott Drew, and while he did, you know. Seriously consider it. Ultimately, he stayed here. Knowing you, him as as long as you have and as well as you do, what do you think is the biggest deciding factor of not jumping into to, into the big blue water? Yeah, you know, it's hard to just pinpoint one reason, but I, I think at the end of the day, I just don't – I think he realized that, A, that's not for me. <laughs> I wouldn't like it. My family wouldn't like it. I don't want to deal with all that goes into being a Kentucky, the Kentucky coach. Got a taste of that at the Mexican restaurant yesterday. <laughs> and also, I just think, I just think too, sometimes, you know, and in, in various walks of life, you know, you, you flirt with another job or another opportunity somewhere, and you sit down and start thinking about it, and then you really start to appreciate what you, what you have at your, at your home. You know what I mean? In, in Waco, Texas. And I, I think, you know, the – with a $7 million contract or whatever it is and the, the love of the fan base and the new arena and the legacy that he's going to leave there and how that legacy may have changed a little bit if he were to leave. You know, I, I think that, uh, you know, sometimes you step back and take a helicopter view of your job and you're thinking, man, I've got a really good, you know, we can do the same things at Baylor that we can do, that we can do at Kentucky. We already have, you know, they've already won a title and they've got, a great their programs in, in great shape and I, I just think that you know all those things combined just made him realize why leap and you know i mean he could have gone there and been out of a job in two years if things didn't go didn't go well you know he can stay at baylor and and for the rest of his life and, and I, hope, I hope that's what happens but you know i certainly don't think anyone should fault him for listening i, I think a lot of jobs these days there's, there's probably you can count on one hand the jobs he might entertain and that that understandably would be one of them but, uh, you know, and, and, and kudos for him to doing his research and then his family up there, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, that Kentucky job isn't for everyone. <laughs> no. It takes a, a certain certain type of person to handle that. That's I'm not ripping on their program or anything. It is what it is, you know. But I, I don't know if Scott w- I would have enjoyed that, to be honest. And uh, there's certainly nothing wrong with that. Have Kentucky fans overvalued their current worth? I think so. And a lot of that, I think, has to do with just the landscape of college basketball now. You know, I mean, tons of coaches are making huge salaries. You know, there's a lot of passionate fan bases. Uh, you know, I mean, 15 years ago, you know, who would have thought that you could win a national title at Baylor? I mean, you know, look at some of the schools that have, uh, you know, advanced to the Final Four in the last couple of years that you never would have guessed. I mean, uh, I think the, the playing field is, is, is evened out a little bit. Uh, in terms of like where you know good recruits are going and things like that, uh, you know there's it's it's still a blue it's still one of the top programs in the country without question. But to just think it's an insult when the Baylor coach turns you down like how could that coach not come here? You know I mean yeah I, I think they have and I think but again I think it's not so much a, a knock on their program it's just more of a credit to all the other programs across the country stepping up, paying coaches, doing the right things to get recruits. You know selling out arenas, things like that. I mean, there's a lot of attractive places out there now. I've asked everybody we've had on the show uh, this question today. So if you're Kentucky, who do you hire now? Mm. Well, it's just, you know, of course I'm not covering it anymore. And mm. so you just read different, you know, obviously if, if they had the money and could get Dan Hurley, I know that people have said there's no way it's happening, but then there's other people saying that they're still going after him. That would be the one. Uh, I, I do think Billy Donovan would be great. He's turned it down as well. But after that, Gosh, you know, <laughs> you know, who are they going to get? Uh, you know, I, I'm, I've always been a Sean Miller guy. He's a little bit abrasive at times and, uh, and things like that. But I think he's an excellent coach. He's proven he can recruit. He's got some baggage, obviously. But they've hired coaches with baggage before. I, I think that's a guy they should look at. Uh, you know, God, I mean, not everyone's a Buzz, a Buzz Williams guy. I think he could be a good third or fourth choice if it falls down to him I, I really like the way he coaches the style of basketball he plays but at the same time you know sometimes I kind of think Buzz Williams is like Shaka Smart I feel like 
he's going to flourish in certain at certain schools where maybe you don't have to sign the McDonald's All Americans every year. There's no pressure to do that. You sign a bunch of guys who just want to play hard, you know, play full court defense the whole time, havoc, all that kind of stuff. That's what he did when he was at Marquette. It worked really well. Same thing at Virginia Tech. You know, you send him to Kentucky. You know, you just wonder is he going to be able to to you know get you know one and done, two and done guys to be able to play like that. But he, he could be a candidate as well, though. So, I don't know. What are you, you, I'm curious to hear your opinion on who you, I, who you I, think would be a good I, fit there. I think it should be Sean Miller, and I also think that they wouldn't be crazy to talk to Will Wade. Uh, just, right. to, just to see that. Now, look, he probably needs another, like another step before he gets to a Kentucky. Mm-hmm. But, like, the dude can flat out coach. And he again, can. he and he and Sean Miller are in the same boat, right? Where everything that they're they lost their previous jobs for now doesn't matter. Like it, right. it, it doesn't matter yeah. at all. It's not even close to a crime anymore. It, it, Absolutely. It, it, it's like one of those eight, like 1750 laws if it's illegal to smoke tobacco next to a cow. Well, like, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like they're, <laughs> it's gone. Right. I've always, I, I've always thought Sean Miller was a top 10 kind of coach. You know, I know he didn't do as well this year at Xavier, but like when he was at Arizona and, and Pittsburgh and, and Xavier before. I mean, I, I just always love the way he coaches. I love his fire, his grit, his passion. I think his players play very, very hard. He's, you know, obviously he's been a good recruiter. I think sometimes with the media, he can be a little difficult. So I've never had great relations with him there, but I, I always just really respected him and thought he would be good. And obviously he took a hit when he got a little bit of trouble, but that, that, that's who I would look at, you know, with awkward. My thing is like, I guess Kelvin Sampson is just, was he just too old at 68? Yeah, I think think so. so. (laughs) Yeah. You know, man, he's so good. (laughs) I'm just, I'm I'm more and more impressed with him, you know, every time I watch them play. But I guess, yeah, I guess maybe they just want to get someone a little younger. So, because his name's never mentioned. So, Uh, but yeah, I I tell you what, though, I mean, I, I think this has, this whole thing has been a real dose of reality and a little bit of an ego jolt to, to those Kentucky fans. And, uh, you know, you hit it on the head. It's, it's not – I don't want to say it's not as prestigious as it was, but there's just so many other people or so many other schools that are that are up there now. Well, I mean, part of it – and look, I, I think the COVID year changed a lot of this in that when you've got 24-year-old guys, and this is what Kentucky's run up against, your one and dones can be great, but you're the only school who's, you know, really doing that right now. So – Right. So when they run up against those veteran guys, like – it's it's just yeah. different, and when everybody was trying to do what Kentucky was doing, they were going to be the best at it. But now they're not. Now it's it's a big melting pot of whatever's going to work for us the best. We're going to do, and there's more than just those options of let's just get these guys who are definitely going to be NBA players. Right. The, the model doesn't work anymore. It, it served them pretty well for a while there, and they wanted they won a championship with it, and almost won another one. But yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with signing a couple of one and done players, but you've got to you've got to mix in those veterans because you know those, those guys may be better NBA players, but when they're 18 years old, they don't have the the, the toughness mentally, especially, and, and 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 maybe not physically at that point in their life to compete with some of these these seniors that are you know grizzled and and have you know won in big time arenas and big time environments and, and won under pressure. I mean, there's a lot to be said for that, and maybe those seniors aren't the ones that are getting drafted first, but they're the ones that are equipped to win championships in college. And, you know, we saw it with Baylor when they won the title. I mean, not a, you know, was there not a lot of one and dones on that team, you know, or if any, so like, <laughs> my brain is fried right now, but yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, like just, you know, you sign Kendall Brown and that's fine. Or Jeremy Sohan, fine, you know, but who are they mixed in with? I mean, they, you know, those guys, you know, brought out the best with them, the culture, uh, you know, helped them uh, and, and kind of maybe mask their inexperience a little bit, and, and they flourish. But to, whole, to have a whole team, basically, that's, that's full of those kind of players is just not going to work anymore. And Kentucky proved that. <laughs> Do you think he'll adapt at Arkansas? Well, I do. I think he'll be forced to change a little bit. He is a very good coach, and I, mm-hmm. I really like John Calipari. I, he was always I, I dealt with him as much as any coach I, out there probably when I was covering the national beat. And, and you know, I'm, I think it was it was a good move for him. Um, I think he's probably refreshed and rejuvenated. But yeah, I do think he'll have to change some things a little bit. But you know, they'll they'll sell out that arena and go crazy. He'll get kids and and they'll be competitive. I you know, I mean, he's he's getting up there in age too. You you wonder, you know. How how bright the 
the fire still burns or how hot it is. But I mean, it must be because he's incredibly, incredibly wealthy now. <laughs> he doesn't have to keep doing this, and he does. So that says a lot about his his competitive fire. And I hope he does do well. He's you know he takes a lot of hits from people, but I've seen him do some really nice things for people and be a good person. And uh, I think deep down he's a great person. And I'm glad he's I'm glad he moved on because you know it was time. I mean, he was definitely underachieving. And, and I'm sure he wasn't happy. You know, the fans weren't happy. It was just a toxic situation. I'm glad we got out of it. Jay King, always great to talk to you, my friend. I haven't seen you, and it's been too long. It's yeah. been far too yeah. long. I so. know. So I'll be back there soon, man. It's uh, good good to hear your voice. And uh, missed everyone in Waco. I thought uh, you guys did a great job covering stuff. Ashley Hodge. I, I talked to him about 11:30 last night, and he goes, "Man, I think, he goes." I, I go, "Man, he's." Stay. And it was funny because earlier in the day, you know, he was kind of nervous, and then uh, he apparently got some some info uh, in the in the wee hours or the or the late night hours. I went to bed with a smile on my face because he he had me convinced he was staying, and he was right. So yeah. great job by all of you covering this, and shout out to Darby Brown too for being at the airport Shoot. yesterday in Temple. You know, it, I always get kind of amused. When and I know you probably got to go, but I always get kind of amused when you know situations like this are out there. And there's just so many erroneous reports. And you know you've got people like Greg Swain, whatever, just convincing the world that it's done. And they're setting up the press conference tables. I'm like, God, there's so much bad reporting out there. A, it just drives me crazy, but it also kind of makes me laugh. It's just like, how could y'all be that bad? You know, and it's a credit to Sikkim and and some of the national guys for not jumping the gun and making sure their sourcing was great and just being patient and waiting for the for the story to break or waiting to re- report things accurately accurately and you guys are the ones that come across looking good while well, a lot of people have egg on their face today so yeah. nice job by everyone all right thanks jason i'll see you soon man call me when you're in town take care Al. Take, all right, bye-bye. All right. yeah jason king old friend of